So, uh, when is it um, when is it a good idea to to buy an investment property with a without a lease in place or with a verbal lease? You hear so often, oh yes, there's um, there's a tenant there, and and a buyer will say, oh, there's a tenant there, I'm re very relaxed. Okay, so unfortunately. Uh, this happens more often than it should, and I just want to address some of the the, um, the factors here. I'm Neil Forster from Organic Growth, and I trust you're going to get some value out of this video. So, firstly, what buyers tend to do, investors tend to do, especially the more inexperienced ones, will say uh, they'll look at a property and there happens to be a tenant there. They'll meet the tenant and think, "Hey, this is a nice guy. At least the property is let. I'm going to go ahead and buy the property." And they might not check that there's a lease in place, or if there is a lease, what the terms of the lease are. The, the, the seller might say, or the agent will say, the rental is 7,000 rand a month. And then the, the buyer goes and buys it on, on face value, and then after transfer, the problems hit. Let me tell you a story of, uh, I'm, I'm smiling, but it's actually a rather unfortunate story, of an investor who, uh, that I was personally involved with here in trying to sort out the mess. But he bought a property, and um, it was about three years ago. And uh, the, this, the agent said there's a tenant in place and he's paying 5,000 Rand a month and everything looked good, the place was well kept, everything was looking nice. So he went ahead and bought the property. Then he came to me uh, at Target Realty and he said, Neil, won't you please uh, manage this property for me? You know, I've, take, I've just taken transfer. I said, sure, great, no problem. Can I have the keys? He said, oh no, you don't need keys, we've got a tenant in place. I said, oh great, can I have the lease? And he went, um, okay, I'll try and get it for you. From, for you. Turns out that there was no lease agreement. Um, there was no written lease agreement. And if there was one, nobody could get hold of it. So he ends up with a, a lease agreement which is verbal. So we started charging the tenant 5,000 Rand a month and so forth. And he paid, he paid the rental. But then we tried to charge him for electricity and he came up with, no, 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 my rental is 5,000 Rand, including water, including lights, including everything. And very soon we had the tenant calling the shots. And then the tenant started to, decided to stop paying rent altogether and to, we had to try and evict him. And we, we went to the, the seller, the, sorry, the owner of the property went to, to an attorney and that's when the real problem started. You know, to try and sue a person on a verbal lease, the, the end of that story was it cost the, the landlord about 70,000 Rand to, to finally get this, the, the problem resolved. So. Um, to answer the question, when's it, when is it a good idea to buy a property without a written lease in place or with a verbal lease in place, the answer is never. Never, 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 never. Because um, the disadvantages far outweigh the advantages. So the disadvantages firstly are, um, just to summarize here, after transfer, the tenant will start calling the shots or there, there's a real um, opportunity for him to do so. He, he will start changing the terms of the clause saying, of the lease or, or saying, you know, my previous landlord always lets me pay my rent by the 10th or I don't pay electricity, the landlord pays that or I never pay any repairs, the landlord does it. All these things, he just, he'll just over and over again say whatever suits him. Okay, and it leaves the tail wagging the dog. The landlord who's supposed to be in charge of his property is suddenly at the behest of somebody else. And then if, if you have to go legal on this tenant to evict him at whatever time, the first, the first step of going legal is to issue summons. Now, unless there's a, le a, a written lease in place which says the domicilium satandi et executandi, which is Latin for the, 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 legal, the legal address at which uh, all notices can be given. Unless the two of you have agreed that the, the, the legal address is the property, it's not the property. In which case, the sheriff has got to serve the summons on the tenant in person. Now this reminds me a bit of the wild, wild west where you've got a sheriff, got to go and find a, um, a, a person and say, you've been served. You know, it just doesn't happen in South Africa. To get a sheriff to do anything in South Africa takes <laughs> miracles. So um, that puts you in a very onerous position. So then you've got to go to court and ask the court to allow you the indulgence of making the premises the domicilium satandi et executandi which is, you might win or you might, you might lose. If you get granted that, then you can then serve summons on the property and start your procedure. So it just adds another month or two and expenses to, to the whole process. Okay. So the, the, the primary thing from a legal point of view 
is in a verbal lease or in the lease that's badly drafted where it's not listed that the domicilium for the property is the actual property. The domicilium for the, the tenant is the property. You've got a serious problem. Okay? And then of course, um, if you happen to get your tenant into court, you manage to find him, if you manage to serve summons and you get him to court, it's going to be her, his word against yours or his word against the ex-seller. Now you've got to bring the ex-owner the, the ex -owner back into, the, into court and who knows what he's going to say. He might just say, well, that was fine. And then you, you left ready on the back foot and, and not in control of the situation. So for, if you had to ask me, um, it's always a bad idea to, to, to buy a property with a tenant in place where there is no signed lease in place. And the lease must be properly signed by all parties. You've got to make sure the identity of the tenant in the property is actually the tenant who signed the lease. All these things, because you might have a lease agreement, but the person staying in there is not, is not your tenant. And now you, that effectively you've got a verbal lease again, or a, a, a lease that isn't formal. Okay, so our suggestion is to avoid any of these kind of pitfalls, because frankly there are more pitfalls than you can even think of. Um, and that is, we often rec we recommend that you, you entertain a property coach, somebody with lots more experience than you, who can take you through all these things and so on. So if you want to use our services, organic growth, uh, property coaching, below this video there's a link, or above I think, I think it's above, there's a link uh, to our website uh, with explaining what property coaching is all about. And let, let's not make these mistakes and, and let tenants rule the roost. Actually, as an investor, you want to be in charge of your property. Until next time, cheerio.